This is a time we need to ascend. We not only need to press through. Many people want to just put their head down and press through. No, the Lord is saying lift your head and come up hither. Not in pride. Lift your eyes to the hill from which comes your help. Every day you don't get what you've done, he showed you mercy. And it's new every day. And you dare worship anyone but him. And by him I mean Jesus. Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahweh, the only living God. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me today on Preach. Be a voice, not an echo. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Ambassador Chantrell Davis. As always, let's bring your hearts and mind together in one accord, and let's go before the throne boldly, that we may obtain mercy, that we may re receive instruction and strength from our Lord and Savior. Bring your hearts and mind in, for there is no time and there is no space by way of the Spirit. Heavenly Father, I would like to thank you that we are alive at such a time as this. Dear God, thank you that we are awake because you sustained us. Father God, thank us, Father God. Thank you, Father God, that as we slept last night, you kept us from our purpose and you hid pride and you sealed our instructions, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we decree that those instructions will go forth unhindered and unchecked by the outside force, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the beautiful written and rhema revelation of you, Father God. We thank you for fellowship with you. We thank you for your spirit, Father God. We thank you for your light. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the peace that is only found in you, the peace that surpasses all understanding. We thank you for the safety that is only found in you. We thank you for clarity, Father God. We thank you for instructions, for your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, Father God, for you do know the way of the righteous, Father God. We do not stumble in the dark as the heathen, neither are we dismayed as the heathen, all when things come up on this earth, Father God, as you have spoken, Father God, for you are true and let every man be a liar, Father God. So we thank you, Father God, that you give us foreknowledge, divine foresight, hindsight, and insight, Father God, that you give us divine instruction, Father God, that we are in the right place at the right time, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, to be kept from danger, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we pray to be filled with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Father God, we pray that you help us to walk worthy of you, Lord, unto all pleasing, and to be fruitful in every good work, and to increase in the knowledge of God, Father. Strengthen us with almighty according to your glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering, with joyfulness, Father God, and we give thanks to you, Father God. Grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, that we always know the hope of our calling and the riches of the glory of the inheritance in Christ Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the strength that you've given us, Father God. And the grace, Father God, that is sufficient, Father God. And we yield to that grace, Father God. And we ask you for more grace to live rightly. More grace to live rightly, Father God. More grace, Father God, to move in a timely manner, Father God. Awakening us a pure heart and a pure mind that we have a pure expression of you, Father God. Continue to give us an unction from the Holy One that we by your grace will know all things, Father God. Thank you, Father God, that by your word, those of us who obey have a mouth and wisdom that our adversaries can neither gain, say, nor resist, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the love that is shed abroad in your heart by way of your Holy Spirit. Let that word be awakened to true capacity and Father God. And and true force, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for there is only true love in you, Father God. And without you, there is no love, Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, we thank you, Father God, for the spirit of wisdom. I thank you for the counsel that is in our heart, Father God, is deep water. Father God, and I thank you about understanding we draw us out, draw it out, Father God. Make us a quick understanding that we are able to walk in your paths rightly, Father God. Take hold of our shield and reins in the day and in the night season, Father God. In the name of Jesus, purify the water of our wells, Father God, that the wellspring of our wisdom, Father God, be for sweet, Father God, not a mixture of bitter and sweet water, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, glorify yourself in and through us in all that we do, Father God, that all we do will bring you praise, Father God. Cause our will to come into alignment. Cause our heart to come into alignment. Cause our purpose to come into alignment, Father God, with your holy consults and counsel. For only your holy consults and counsel shall come to pass, Father God. For the name of Jesus, we purpose to remain with you, Father God. We thank you that the gates of hell will not prevail against us, Father God. The gates of hell will not prevail against your church, Father God. We thank you that we are strong in the Lord and the power of your might, Father God. In the name of Jesus, that you always cause us to triumph in Christ Jesus, Father God. We thank you that we own all things, Father God. For Christ owns the world, Father God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness of earth, Father God. And we are Christ and Christ is yours, Father God. So we thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we move forth in a position from victory, not for it, Father God. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, that we belong to a, a, a holy and loving God, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that we are victorious in all that we do, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for the burden of removing yoke, destroying anointing, Father God. I send it forth with this word, Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, that any person place a thing into their action in any other form of now, and anything, Father God, that we can't even conceive, that will be, uh, be a burden in our life, I decree it is removed. If it is a yoke about our neck, I decree it is destroyed. Father God, we suffer not witches and warlocks to live according to thy word, Father God. Let them eat the fruit of their own lips and the thoughts and the gifts of their own heart, Father God. Do according to their own evil, Father God. Let their own violent villain come down on their own faith, Father God. Let the angel of the Lord pursue them. Let the angel of the Lord persecute them, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, make their way dark and slippery and let them be as chaff before the wind, Father God. 
God. For you said all those who gathered against us would not be by you. And what you were called to do is fall for our sake. So we declare your decrees. That all those who have arrayed this stuff against us, Father God, spiritually and physically, Father God, in any place, any person, Father God, any room, any dimension, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, that they fall for our sake, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God. We decree that the words that they have spoken against us are condemned for Father God. We, you said that any mouth that risen against us in judgment, we shall condemn it, so we condemn every evil mouth that is risen against us in judgment, even over every evil altar and even the altars out of their heart. We condemn their mouth in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God. We decree their words shall not stand, and neither shall they come to pass, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, for we are victorious in you, Father God. We move forth unhindered and unchecked by the outside force, Father God. In the name of Jesus, enlarge our territory, Father God. Let your hand be with us, Father God. Keep us from all evil, Father God. In the name of Jesus, that we be not grieved by it, that we can serve you, Father God, unhindered and unchecked by the outside force, Father God, and without distraction. We trust you, Father God. We trust your word. We surrender to your word, and we trust our life to the provision of that word, Father God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let the Lord Christ Jesus be magnified in us, Father God, in all that we do. We thank you, Father God, for grace, and we only ask you for more grace, Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we seal this prayer as one mouth and one heart and one mind, and we say amen. Okay, beloved, I can see, well, the screen went off and it came back on, uh, thank goodness, because I keep forgetting to do it. I suppose with all I do in the day, I can allow myself that, <laughs> but every now and then I have to, uh, in the middle of a ministry message, uh, adjust my uh, power saving options. Uh, so bear with me here one moment Why I, what the mess was that? I hope that was outside. Okay, because I don't need nothing going on funny. Okay, beloved. Let's get this thing kicked off. I want to thank you for joining me today. For those of you who it's your first time uh, being on this channel, I would behoove you and I beseech you by the mercies of God to go hit the playlist of not only dreams and visions, but the playlist of these rhema word, powerful, 411 heart of the father messages and start to a marathon on them because he is speaking and you're going to see that. I don't have to tell you that. I ch matter, in fact, I challenge some of you to read if there's nothing but a chapter a day. And start from the beginning of the list or the end of the list and work your way up through the ministry messages. And if you are not changed by the end of it, don't even come back to this channel no more. I challenge you on that. Because there's no way, not only listening to it, applying it, because you're going to receive instruction to where you're not still touching perverse things. Because you're, the Lord is going to shine the light on a lot of things that you're putting uh uh, put your hands to that is giving the enemy access in your life. Not only that, things that you are touching and doing that is keeping him from inhabiting you and inhabiting your life the way he chooses to. Again, I told you, my job is not to convince you. My job is to declare the word of truth unhindered and unchecked, to declare the word of truth rightly divided with the anointing to present to you an option and you choose or whether you go receive that. So when you're hearing the word of God as an example and something is pricked in you because you know you touch it, either you're going to choose to say, oh my God, I did that, or you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna justify that sin. At that point, you've chosen. When you either you're going to justify why you're doing or you're going to acknowledge that you're doing and say, give me grace and help me. And that is how you have made your choice. The enemy has already lined everything up. Okay. This system is already set up a new world order. What did I tell you this is? The new world order is no more Christ order. That, and we are getting to the point to where we have just about hit critical mass. What's critical mass? More people are yielding to the ways of the enemy. More people have plugged into the dark, dark light. And, and by those by dark light, those who have come out of the true light of Christ and plugged into the dark light of, of, of knowledge. Where it's enlightening you be darkness. Or more people are choosing to yield to the ways and the system of Babylonian. They would have told you about Babylonian is not just a city. It is a state of mind. It is a religion. And if you're in either one of them, you're in Babylon. So you have to continually examine yourself as you move along. He says, examine yourself to whether you be in faith. This is why the word tells you this. And the kind of messages that the Lord gives me, he's going to shine a light on everything in you. And at that point, you're going to be a, a choice. The, 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 the Holy Spirit is going to prick you to choose this day who you will serve. When you feel that and you know something you've done and you feel that conviction, because only the Holy Spirit can give conviction. So don't direct it at Miss Davis. Don't direct it, direct it at Ambassador Davis. I'm delivering the word. And if you felt a prick in your heart, it was the Holy Spirit. And he said, in the day that you hear, you harden not your heart. That right there is the moment that you're going to choose to harden your heart toward him or you're going to soften toward him. By acknowledging your sin. Because by acknowledging your sin, you recover your own soul. I say this stuff again because I need you to get it in you. I told you that the Lord, you know, and anyone who studies that before he formed you in the belly, he knew you. 
He put something in you that at the right place at the right time will be manifest during his time. No matter what trials you go through, even though when you stay on the track, uh, straight path, you go through less turmoil. That's the that's what's meant by obedience is better than sacrifice. Where you just you grow up and you're raised well and you you're instructed and you move as the Lord moves you. You're gonna make some mistakes, but you got less mistakes. So the enemy has less interest in your life. So you see less turmoil. When he got to catch you up, there's some pressure. He put something in you that at the right time, by his Holy Spirit, the breath of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, will breathe on what he put in you, different things he put on you to put in you to manifest at certain seasons and times of your life. Not all at once, but who you yield to is who, who who's going to breathe on it. Where you're giving your attention is the breath that is given to what's in you. That is why you can use your gift to sing or to teach or to dance or to or build houses or whatever gift it is that's in you, you can use it for the enemy. That's why he said there'd be good invention. Not all inventions are good. I'm presenting a choice. Or shall I say I'm presenting the truth for you so that you can make a sound decision. Behold the goodness and burden. You receive a hundredfold now with persecution. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but who will? The Lord delivers you from them all. You have an advantage by way of the Holy Spirit. But many people will not yield and allow the enemy to sanctify them holy enough to where he can start to rot through you. You're nothing but a holy conduit. You have to be hollowed out. And to be, you have to be emptied of yourself to be filled with him. Just like many of you have to be emptied of the lies you know to be filled with the truth. And many of you are so full of lies. That's the stronghold. There's an immediate argument in your mind. Like when somebody pricked you for shaking up with your boyfriend, the first thing you do is start to defend yourself. That's the stronghold. That's a demonic force. This deception that's going forth with all this, you need to be together, I will keep telling you. The Lord is not in it. It has nothing to do with him. Many people can't even see what's coming. He's getting the wires crossed even further because many people's wires are already crossed. Calling it good, evil, and evil good. Now they're calling it evil, even evil for police to even to police. Even though there's some who make mistakes to say get rid of police and all together, that is calling evil good and good evil. Your wires are crossed. You can come across bad bankers. Is everybody close down bankers? You come across bad landlords and you say we ain't getting landlords no more? Bad restaurants. Have you completely stopped eating at all restaurants? Don't get off into this motionism. He's not in it. That's that sensuality. You're being ruled by your senses, not by the spirit that you can't even see what's going on. And again, I say the people that's lining up with Black Lives Matter, who are clearly Marxist people, read their manifesto. They hate the modern family. They hate one man and one woman. They hate the family life. They, they, they love abortion and feminism. And if you're walking with them, you are in agreement with them, and you will be judged with them. And I'm going to say it over and over and over because there will be no excuse because if you see the sword coming and not warned then your blood is on my hand what does the sword mean the sword is not just the judgment the sword is his word and once he sends his word for it must happen it can't return for it and i see the sword coming some of his sword has been through my mouth I ain't loaded all of them up yet but let me get into this message here because I have to get you, as I said before, the enemy knows it's important that if you get anything in the beginning stages of something, later he can cause it to fall. Use it even as a foundation. If he can get something crooked or cause you to pervertly build a foundation, a crash is coming. So many of you who are new in the faith or you're learning new things, he can immediately send somebody behind it to pervert a word or to twist that word or to cause misunderstanding of that word. Or some people will come up and all of a sudden call that teacher false and that teacher ain't false. And all of a sudden you're not receiving from them the same. You have gotten some contamination. What's the word I'm looking for? The way you can break down concrete or whatever you use to build a foundation with a cheaper version of it, a diluted version of it, a fall is coming. 
So if you can get something in you in the foundation of anything in your life, whether it's a marriage, whether it's a business, whether it's a relocation, whether it's your, especially in your ministry and your call, if you can get something sold in you crooked and perverse in the beginning, you will grow crooked. You will grow wrong. The foundation will be not secure. And at a certain moment, and he usually likes for you to grow first so that the crash can be open, so that the a name of God is blasphemed. So he creates it, and that's what a snare is. A snare is not sudden. He sows it, and he watches you, and he sows it, and he watches And if you don't find through divine spiritual teaching that shines a light on something that's hidden in you, it's going to grow with you. And you're going to fall and fail with it. So you have to continually examine your walk no matter how you're operating. And particularly, that's the kind of ministry the Lord has given me. Okay? It's multifaceted. But you have got to be prepared for the glory that's about to fall. Because the very glory that he wants to pour out on you will destroy you. It will kill you in your presence. If you are with, with the sin that you're covenant, with the, the sin that you're hiding, the sin that you won't confess to. You come to the Lord and you won't offer up your wrong. Let me get into this word, okay? The name of this message is, and this is prophetic. I've already told you before, and in more than one message, that there was going to be premature death for various reasons. There will be premature death for people who will not keep their mouth off people. There will be death of witches and warlocks that have it. The Lord has gave time. I literally saw one die in the spirit realm. And it happens in the spirit first. I didn't do it. He showed me it was going to happen. Okay? And apparently somebody over there really doing some evil, and they just hit him. Because I'm over a man of my business. Dealing with the word of God. And premature death through people who wouldn't keep their mouth off people. And dishonoring. I was shown that. They're literally in the spirit realm. And if you did not find that vision, go find it. It's premature death. And it's because people's mouth was on it. And literally while you're praying in the spirit, minding your own business. He showed me in the spirit realm and in another language pronounced judgment. And it would be your mouth to pronounce the judgment over even the, it may not it won't be in your natural it will be, most likely it will not be in your natural language because it's the Holy Spirit. You're just a vessel. But the Lord showed me this. And then there's gonna be premature death for people being at the wrong place at the wrong time around the wrong people, life and death by association, being out of timing, out of alignment, therefore out of order and into darkness. We must remain with the Lord. He said, come let us reason together, which is as one. I told you your fight from the time you come into Christ as you grow. When you get, once you get past all the stuff you use to try to confuse you and cause fear and cause you to doubt, your, your fight is going to be to abide with him. Because everything's pulling you in every direction to get you to come out of him, which is out of your salvation, out of your protection, out of your light, out of your understanding, out of your truth, out of your grace, and look at the things that you have to toil. We don't toil. The blessing of the Lord has made us rich and added no painful toil. He said rest. And when I need you to do something, I'll tell you. Talk to me. Worship me. Do good. Trust God and do good. I already told you the male and female together is where the blessing starts. That's why this world is trying to get you out of the male and female merge. Because all blessings will derive from that. From being fruitful, from multiplying to the blessings of the Lord come by way of the family union. One man, one woman. And the, he gives her, she gives him. Y'all raise the child together. You fruitful and you multiply. Everything that the Lord created to operate is fruitful. And if there can be no fruitfulness of it, it's of thy God. That's why man on man ain't fruitful. They have no fruitful purpose. Woman on woman has no fruitful purpose. I don't care if you don't like to hear this. It's the truth. The Lord loves you. I'm telling you to turn. Because what the enemy going to do to you when you get to hell, he hates you. Even though you're serving him, he hates you because you look like the God you came from. And he's trying to turn you into his image. Because the word of God tells us that when Jesus Christ returns, when we see him, he has a form that we don't know. And a name we don't know yet. And the Bible tells us that when we see him, we will be like him. And the enemy tries to mimic everything of the Lord because he wants to be him. So when he comes, he will have people who look like him. And he's neither male 
nor female, which is why you see it now. It happens in the spirit where, of course, which is where just gender fluidity. You walk away this way, one other, and eventually they're going to have a look to you. You can't tell if they're male or female. They're going to look like it. Let me keep going, okay? Let me get to this message. Premature death. This is prophetic. I want you to hear this word. This is prophetic. Why would you die before your time? This message, premature death from what of wisdom. You are slayed by your turning away. Receive the foundation of wisdom for the Lord. I'm going to save that title again. And it's prophetic. Premature deaths from want of wisdom. That's lack of it. Slayed by your turning away. You are slayed by your turning away. Therefore, receive the foundation of wisdom. The foundation of wisdom, fear the Lord. Let me get right into this word, okay? Proverbs 9 and 10. And the Lord began to speak. He always gives me a scripture and he begins to expound. What did I tell you before? Study me. If you break down the word study, it says to take in, to meditate, to take in a, an amount of word, uh, to take in and to retain for later elaboration. And the Holy Spirit audibly said to me, I'm that elaborator. I wrote it. I elaborate on it. You just take it in. Trust God and do good. Take it in. Trust God and do good. And we know to pray. Okay. Proverbs 9 and 10. The fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is the beginning. It's not the, it's not the whole consult of wisdom. It is the beginning of wisdom. You don't see fear of the Lord. Go tell me you fear the Lord. Even though everyone hollers, oh God, when all this calamity hit. And I ask you again, what God are you calling? Because there's only one. We got these no gods that people are worshiping. But there's only one. Okay. To fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy, the knowledge of the holy, catch it. He just said the knowledge of the saved. The knowledge of the holy is understanding. When you ain't walking holy, you don't have knowledge. He said the knowledge of the holy. Well, I ain't going to say you ain't got knowledge, you got the dark knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil. That's that dark knowledge, that dark light. If the light in you be darkness. To fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The knowledge of the holy is understanding. Okay? And all I get and get understanding, how can you get understanding without being holy? I want y'all to hear this. Proverbs 10, I'm doing an amplified version. The reverent fear of the Lord, not just reverent, you fear the Lord. Okay? The reverent fear of the Lord, that is worshiping him and regarding him as truly awesome. He is all full. That word ain't what you think, what you think, that all for me, he full of all. Okay, is the beginning of the preeminent part of wisdom. It's the preeminent part, and God is, and we know the Lord is all preeminence. He said He ascended above all earth. He descended low and descended the, uh, above all things that He may have, in all things may have the preeminence. The beginning of the preeminent part of wisdom is starting point. Is the starting point. It is the starting point. It is the essence, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding and spiritual insight. You can't have divine foresight, high-sighted insight, not rightly, without the Holy Spirit. I told you, many can speak what is true, but not by the way of truth. And it is only truth when it comes by the way of truth, who is Christ Jesus, and by His Spirit and His wisdom, not the spirit of divination that is going forth on so many. The false fire, I literally saw it in the vision, the false fire enlightened people, and people who were already blessed with the Holy Spirit, it could not light. Witchcraft and sorcery. And I snatched that cat up and broke it like a snap. Felt his bones just crushing my hands. That's prophetic too. Yeah. The Lord. They contend with the Lord. Always know they contend with the Lord. Always know that. That's all he wants you to know. They contending with him. And when you keep that in your mind, no matter how they come at you, they will not prevail. For the Lord thy God is with you. Okay. New Living Transfer Let me see where I put this in here. Fear the Lord. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Same thing. The knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. The knowledge of the Holy One of Israel results in good judgment. He said judge a righteous judgment. Judge a righteous, righteous judgment. Okay? Judge a righteous judgment. I told you before. 
Judgment is what judging is what keeps the great judgment from coming. Judging from day to day what's right and wrong, what what is against the Lord and what's not, what's holy and unholy, what's right uh, uh, and what's profane, between good and evil, keeps the cup from overflowing that the judgment, which is his wrath, is not poured out. Judge a good judgment by the Holy Spirit. Which is why you can look at the situation and know that that man being on that man's neck for that long, that was unholy and it was wicked. But we, we have to seek justice and love mercy. We still got to pray for that man. And judging the fact that now they want all the cops pulled off the street is an unholy judgment. I'm going to leave that there. You come out of them streets. Quit being in an agreement with this mess. Because your home will be hit the same because you're in agreement with it. Take heed. I can't make you. But I'm telling you. The heart of the Father is not in it. He's in your prayer. He's in your worship at home. He's not out there in that lying chaos. Because it's lying chaos. That lying unity. You can't be in chaos and unity at once. The Lord is there. He's in none of that. Don't be distracted by it. Let me keep going. Okay. Be instructed, beloved. Proverbs 3. My son. And I'm going to go just down this path. My son, forget not my law. But let thine heart keep my commandments. Don't forget his law. And let your heart keep my commandments. The law of love. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that has made us free from law and death. Don't forget my commandments. What is his commandments? My words. Again, those of you who have not seen this holy consult, that word, and the multitude of counselors, which are his words, which are his commandments, that message, it will bless your soul. Keep my commandments. His commandments are his words, written or rhema. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add unto you. What? His law, which is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. His commandments, which are his words. For length of days they will add to you. Long life they will add to you. And peace shall they add to thee. The peace that surpasses all understanding by keeping his commandments that are his words. And don't let his law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And to love thy neighbor as thyself. On this hang all the law and the prophets. Okay, three. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Don't let mercy. Keep a merciful and forgiving heart. Okay. Always walk in truth. Live truly, deal truly. Don't say one thing out your mouth when your heart means something else. Let yet your yea be yea, your nay be nay. Live truly and deal truly, and you can't do that but by the way of truth and by, and through his grace. By faith. Okay? And lean not to your own understanding. Don't lean to your own understanding. He told you that the understanding of the Holy One by his Holy Spirit. Okay? In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths. I told you a path is an established line of travel as established. That means he, he knows the steps of the, the steps of the good man and woman are ordered of the Lord. Your steps are ordered of him. He knows the way of the righteous. And, and he said, acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your paths. Your path can change. You're still going the way of righteousness, the way of Christ, through the way of the one who is holy. But your paths can change with me turn of the day. Move here. Stay here longer. Leave that job. Stay at the job. Your path can change from day to day. And when a path is in an established line of communication and travel, which means when you are off the path, you have left communication with your Lord. Get back on. Okay? Don't be wise in your own knowledge. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy neighbor and merit to thy bones. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And I mean every appearance of evil. And it shall be health to thy neighbor and marrow to thy bones. And then you could just, I can really break that down just let you know what the marrow does for the body. But I'm going to keep going, okay? Because you could back that and, and I know it's a revelation in it, okay? Don't be wise in your own knowledge, okay? Honor him with your substance. That's not just you. With everything you have. Honor the Lord with thy substance. And with the first fruits of thine increase. That means your, I know y'all don't want to hear this. Your substance is your heart, your mind, your will, your emotions, your things, your car, your finances, your lips. That means if somebody needs to ride somewhere, give people rides. 
Be kind. Share your stuff. Sow seed into those who feed you in the ministry. Help a brother and sister out there struggling. Honor him with all your substance. Whether you're praying for them, whether you're giving them things they need, whether you're helping them pay a bill, whether you put gas in their car, whether you're helping to stop over a visit and you see they ain't got no food in their house, take them to the grocery store. Come on, let me take you to the store. And people who are edifying you with the word of God, don't you ever forget to honor people. And I'm not just saying, I don't care who you listen to. If that's, that word is uh, bringing food out in you, so into it. He said, honor him with all your substance. That is mind, body, will, emotion, actions, food, car, gas, everything you have. And, 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 and with your first fruits, the first fruit of your increase. What does that mean? Let me, I lost my place. Okay, there it is. And honor him with the first fruits of your increase. Which means, say, for instance, you got a windfall. Okay? Uh, a windfall. I'm not talking about um, where you're working regularly, especially if you're giving tithe and you give it into people already. But you get an and sudden money or a big promotion. Take a piece of that and sow into a ministry that's feeding you. Or sow into a brother and sister or some, or, or, or some feed somebody. But honor him with the first fruits. Take something off before you spend anything else. Or say, for instance, you get your check. And before you pay anything, even if you can't get to where you're going to go pay it, if you write it in by check or if you buy a money order, I don't care if you have to write on a piece of paper to show an action of you thinking of the Lord first. You know, $50 or whatever your calculation is to the Lord. And whatever you're going to give it, you're going to give it. But it's the first thought of, let me get this to Lord first. That's the first fruit. It's in many ways. It ain't, it ain't just that simple, okay? Honor him with all thy substance, okay? Because all this is leading somewhere, okay? So shall the bonds be filled with plenty. That means your bank accounts, your home safes, whatever you got, your closets, you got so many coats and shoes you can't keep up with. So shall your bonds be filled with plenty. That means with everything. You got to start giving stuff away because you can't even keep up with the stuff you got. And that's where we're supposed to be. Okay? And thy, and thy presses shall burst with new wine. Your presses shall burst with new wine. That, that, that's not only a financial thing. That's the spiritual grace upon you and all you do. What you touch turns to prophetic gold. Where you just set foot is blessed. You'll see stuff start to come to people just because you're there. Okay, verse 11, his chastening, my son, despise not, and this being people, son, daughter, my son, despise not the chest, chastening of the Lord. Don't despise when you hear chastising word coming through people, because that is the Lord. Okay, neither be weary of his correction. These messages are correction. Don't get weary of it. He strengthens you with adversity. Some things he allows in your life to stay longer because he's strengthening you to it. And he's going to make you stronger than it. He does not need uh, any kind of a person in battle he has to pull out of the battle. He needs to strengthen you in it. So you go forth with force and become stronger than it. Unfazed by it. Your forehead become like flint concerning it. Okay? For whom the Lord loveth, he corrects it. So if you can correct it, he loves you. I ain't talking about some of y'all getting whipped from your own, uh, going your own way. Some of y'all getting whipped because you didn't your own way and you wasn't following the Lord no matter what. Don't, don't think all uh, turmoil is from the Lord. Don't think all opposition is from the Lord. Don't think all adversity is from the Lord. I told you before, either you got the fire of redemption or the fire of reciprocity. And some of, a lot of people got the fire of reciprocity. They've been going their own way, doing their own thing, self-appointing, self -appointing, talking about people, sharing video, putting their mouth on uh, men and women of God, being disrespectful. They are under the fire of reciprocity. But then there's a fire of redemption. He is refining you and molding you in his fire. Not a strange fire. That strange fire is that fire of reciprocity. You gave up strange fire with your lips. He said you didn't sow to the you didn't sow with your mouth wind and you're gonna reap the well wind. You sow into your life wind and you're going to reap the whirlwind. Don't sow wind because you will reap the whirlwind. Okay? Okay, wisdom. Here's wisdom. 13. Oh yeah, he, he loveth who corrected. Even as a father, the son in whom he delighted. He corrects you because he delights in you. 
Okay, let's move to 13, his wisdom. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain of it is better than the gain of fine gold. It's better than the merchandise of silver, and getting it is better than gain and gold. Okay? He said fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and rubies are some very expensive jewels. Ruby, this big, you be the mother island. And all the things that thou canst desire. That means anything, not, not that you can get. Not anything you get. All that you can desire. And you know, some of y'all, we can go, you, and he just said anything you ever wanted, period, no matter what, is yes. Your imagination to dissolve and go crazy. You will go away, and he said, it is above all things that you even can desire or not to be compared unto her. If everything you could ever see and want anywhere is not to be compared to wisdom. They can't measure up. Okay? Long life, honor, and riches. This is going somewhere. Premature debt from want of wisdom. You are slayed by your turning away. Therefore, receive the foundation of wisdom. Fear the Lord. Let me go back down. Let me keep going. Okay? Long life, honor, and riches. Verse 16. Length of days is in her right hand. And in her left hand is riches and honor. Mm. Mm -mm. Gosh. He's trying to steal riches and honor. Yeah, I just got a revelation. I told you in this hand I crushed that cat that was a witch. It's another thing I crushed in this left hand. Left hand is rich as an honor. Okay, let me keep going. Wow. No, I'm not going to share it. No, I'm not going to share what I crushed. Because <laughs> it is symbolic and prophetic. Okay. Her ways, her ways are ways of pleasantness. That means she's pleasant. And her paths are peace. And we need the peace of the Lord. She is a tree of life. To them, a tree of life. Catch this. The Lord calls us trees of righteousness. There was only one tree of life that, that was removed out of the garden because if Adam and Eve had eaten of it, they would have forever been in their state. But we would have the tree of life again because you can read in Revelations. Well, you know it's in the Bible. I'm trying to think. I don't want to be quoted off the top of my head. But the tree of life where they said, when you press through in grace, that you will have the right to the tree of life. And we will eat of that tree of life and we will be forever in, the, forever in that state for the needs will be for the healing of the nature. There's a tree of life that will be in heaven. Okay? She is... A tree of life. He didn't just say any tree. He said a tree of life. To them that lay hold on her. You lay hold of wisdom. She is a tree of life. Okay. So the tree of life is wisdom. As well. One can't be without the other. To them that lay hold on her. And happy is everyone who retaineth her. A retainer. Ooh. Hey, you retain an attorney. <laughs> oh, I could just go. Let me stay on course. By wisdom, the Lord founded the earth. Okay? The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. And by understanding, he established the heavens. Wisdom, he founded the earth. And by understanding, he established it. Okay? It is established. By understanding, he established the heavens, I mean. Okay? By knowledge. By his knowledge, the paths are broken up. And the clouds drop down the dew. This is by knowledge. My son, let not them, what them? All them I just said. Let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound with them and discretion. So shall they be life. I just said this multiple times in here. So shall there be life unto thy soul. Your soul is your very breath. Your thinking, your feeling, your choosing. This is how you think your soul. There will be life to your soul. And grace to thy neck. That's how you keep your head upright. Boy, that's, that's, that's. Grace to thy neck. Then you shall, then you shall walk safely and not stumble. This is verse 23. Thou shalt, then thou shalt walk in thy way safely. You shall walk in your way safely. And thy foot. He said then, which means all this stuff before that. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely. And thy foot shall not stumble. When thy lies down, uh, which means all this other stuff has to be for when you lie down. When thou layest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, they shall lay, thou shalt lay down, and thy sleep 
shall be sweet. You gonna sleep good, like a baby. Can anybody sleep better than a baby or a puppy or a fat dog? <laughs> Don't be afraid of sudden fear or the wicked. This is the possessive form. Don't be afraid of sudden fear or the wicked desolation. Desolation is for the wicked, not for you. Okay? Be not afraid of sudden fear. Neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. He didn't say if it come. He said don't be afraid. Uh, be, uh, uh, be not afraid of sudden. Because it would be sudden. But neither. So it's neither nor. Of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. Because it's going to keep coming. Not if it come. So desolation is coming. Don't be afraid of it. We're already seeing some of it now. For the Lord shall be thy confidence. The Lord shall be thy confidence. Not this group and kumbaya. Hold a hand. Because I'm not going to hear it coming about it anyway. Because it means come by her, Lord. No, come by her. Come by Yah. Come by, Lord. He ain't got a hand out there with y'all. Okay? For the Lord shall be thy confidence. And shall keep thy foot from being taken. Okay? Verse 27. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due. That means anything good. Don't withhold it from those that it's due to. They can go right back. You didn't pray for you. They didn't protect you when you were down. They helped you. Any other way you can imagine. Don't withhold good from them to whom it is due. When it is in the power of thine hand to do it. When it is in your power to do it. Don't withhold it. Say not unto thy neighbor. Your neighbor is your brother. I can take you to scripture. Hey, hey, when he's speaking about your neighbor, because he's speaking about the member and the brethren, your neighbor. Go at, which is more than one definition of neighbor, but the way people use it about loving your neighbor is your brother, okay? Because it does have different definitions depending on where it is. A couple, okay? Say not unto thy neighbor, go and come again, and tomorrow I will give. Okay? When thou hast it by thee. Don't tell them to just come back when you can go right there and get it. When they come to you in need and you got it and you tell them to come back when you already got it there, don't do that. Okay? Verse 29. Despise not evil. Despi devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing that he dwelleth securely by thee. Strive not with the man without cause. If he have done thee no harm. You have the people strive against you. You ain't thinking of them. Ain't said nothing. Ain't done nothing. Just you happily go your way. And they striving with you across the country. Striving against you in another state. Striving against you in their home. And you ain't a bit more thinking about them. You got your mind on the Lord. You got your mind stayed on Jesus. And they're over there striving with you. Take heed. Okay. They've done you no harm. But you're over there striving with them. That means they're over there trying to stand cursed with their mouth. And some of them sending it out of their heart. And it's going to hit them because it's coming out of their heart. Okay? It's the heart that's sending it forth. So it's going to hit just the same. Because don't you know people can send forth out against you out of their heart. They can hate you so much and be so jealous and, and presumptuous against you. And have misunderstanding and lies in their, lies in their heart concerning you. And they, so much so that demons will become attracted to them. And of course, them same demons are going to torment them. That's what they don't know. Those same demons are going to torment them later. But they will project it towards you. But then when you're over there praying and worshiping the Lord is putting the truth, what you think is going to happen? It's going to go back. And they're thinking you're over sinning. You ain't doing nothing. You're just worshiping. And they're sending it out. And the Lord has to defend you for you. They're over there shooting at you privately when you've done no wrong. That's what's happening to a lot of people. They think people over praying or talking about, that's not what it is. What they're sending out is cut, going back. Let me keep going. Don't envy the wicked. Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. For the forward, for the forward is an abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. If you are forward in your mouth, forward in your activity, that's presumption. That's going your own way. That's assuming. Forwardness, just, I told you, sound bold. You're just speaking and saying anything. You're not even waiting on the counsel of the Lord to open your mouth. And nothing you do. You're forward. Okay? And that's something you can't be. His curse, his blessing. Okay? Verse 33 to 35. The curse of the Lord. Catch this. Because this is biblical. He told us not to curse. But this is what the word says. 
you can declare this. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. That's not you cursing them. Lord, your word says the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. But he blesseth the habitation of the just. Lord, you said that the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. But he blesseth the habitation of the just. Surely he scorneth, surely the Lord scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace to the lowly. The wise shall inherit glory. The wise shall inherit glory. But shame shall be the promotion of fools. Shame shall be the promotion of fools. So when they get promoted, it's going to be to their shame. Shame is your promotion when you're a fool. Okay? Your sister and kinswoman. Proverbs 7 verse 4. Say unto wisdom. Y'all hear me pray this quite a bit. Thou art my sister. And understanding, you are my kinswoman. Okay? A heart prayer. And I want you to mind it, okay? And I'm going to get you the scripture. Okay? Colossians 1, 19 through 14. And this is what y'all hear me pray regularly. I, I pray so much I don't have to see the scripture no more. And certain prayers you should get in your heart. I believe this is one of them as well as Psalms 91. There's a couple other ones, but especially these. Because they cover a lot. For this cause also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And I desire that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, to be fruitful in every good work and increase in the knowledge of God, to be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, because joyfulness is important, giving thanks to unto the Father, which had made us meet to be partakers, just to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. You are delivered. That's past tense. From the powers of darkness. And hath translated us into. Translated this past tense. Past tense translated us into the kingdom of the son. Uh, the son of his love. I'm so used to praying it. In a way I pray on my own. Okay. Translated us into the kingdom of the son of his. His dear son. In whom we have redemption through his blood. And even the forgiveness of sin. Okay. Now I'm going to go on down to the rest part of this message. Again, this message and prophetic premature death from want of wisdom slayed by your turning away. Therefore receive the foundation of wisdom for the Lord. Let me go down. Okay. Don't die prematurely for lack of wisdom. I'm going to read this to you in just three different forms. This is the word. The lips of the righteous feed many. Righteous people will feed many. Spiritually. You are spiritually fed when you come to this channel. For these are the lips of the righteous. Why? I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He is my righteousness. And I know that. Therefore, these lips feed many. Okay? But fools die for want of wisdom. This is a prophetic word. Many are going to die early for want of wisdom. Let me read this in another form. The lips of the righteous feed and guide many. But fools who reject, this is what makes you a fool, who reject God and his wisdom, die for lack of understanding. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Okay? Next version. The talk of a good person, because we're good only in Christ, that's righteous, because there's none good but God, we know that. Is, is, is a, a person is rich, fair for many, but chatterboxes die of an empty heart. So you have an empty heart, you lack understanding, it is want of wisdom. Therefore, the message and prophetic word Premature deaths from want of wisdom. You are slayed by your turning away. That means you are rejected this knowledge. Therefore, receive the foundation of wisdom. Fear the Lord. Okay? Let me keep going. Where did I leave off? Oh, 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 oh. oh I went way up too high. Okay? 
for one of wisdom. When you disregard, when you disregard his instructions, lack of wisdom. Okay? When you disregard. Proverbs 1, 25-33. But ye, hello, you have set at naught my counsel. That means you ain't listening to it. You scroll past these kind of messages. You scroll past somebody trying to tell you the truth. Okay? But ye have set at naught all my counsel. His counsel are his words. Whether they are from him in your ear or whether they are through, because you just going to be through somebody because you heart your heart and the Lord can't talk to you when you got all this dross in your spirit. You can't hear him because that sin in your flesh is like static to the frequency of the Lord. The sin in your flesh is like a blocking static to the voice of the Lord. Okay? But you have said it not all by counsel and you would none of my reproof. That means you wouldn't have it. None of my correction. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When you when your fear cometh, when your fear cometh as desolation, he said, Don't be what did it, what did I just read up up top? Don't be fearful of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. Not if desolation is coming. He says, So therefore, when your des when fear cometh as desolation, your fear cometh as desolation. And your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. Y'all keep thinking these tornadoes up enough if you want to. When distress and anguish, distress and anguish cometh upon you, what do you say now? Then shall they call upon me. What do y'all see? Bible shelves was empty, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early. And I already told you what the Lord had to say. He said, and they shall not find me. But I know what the Lord showed you. If you have not seen that message, clean hands, they rend their garments and not their heart, please go catch it. It's the heart of the Father. Okay? For they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. The knowledge and the fear of the Lord is under the beginning of wisdom. So they're choosing not the fear of the Lord and they hate knowledge. Okay? They were none of my counsel and they despised my reproof. Therefore shall they eat, therefore shall they eat the food of their own way. This is your stuff. The Lord is not doing this for all y'all to say, where is your God? I say, where is yours? The one you serve. The one you yield your members to. The one you give lip praise to. The one whose order you walk after. Where is your God? For God, God, you can't, you can't uh, reject his divine blueprint and get his divine protection. I reject your blueprint your way, but I want your protection. Again, it don't work like that. The righteous run to it and they are safe. The Lord is a refuge and the righteous run to it. That means you already have been with him. You can run out to the cover of your Lord because you are his. Okay? Therefore, they should eat the fruit of their own way and be filled. You want to eat the fruit of your own way? That means you're going to harvest what you put out, rejecting him. And their own way, and they will be filled with their own devices. He's going to fill you with your own devices. Your own ideas, your own concepts. How can we beat this? What can we do to prosper? You want your own thoughts and devices, your own plans and techniques. Well, we know the Lord makes known his ways to us like he did Moses. For those who yield, he makes known to you his ways. Okay? The turning away of the simple slave then. Yeah, y'all done read all the scripture that I'm putting in that gave the title, okay? This is a prophetic word. For the turning away of the simple, that's a fool, shall slay them. These are people who refuse information. And the prosperity of fools will destroy them. What did I tell you before? The reason why the prosperity of a fool will destroy him is because he's going to do foolishly with it. A fool going to spend money like a fool. A fool going to spend money on foolish things. A fool will destroy himself with wealth. The prosperity of a fool will destroy him. And the turning away of the simple shall slay them. Okay? But whosoever hearkeneth, but whosoever hearkeneth unto me, that's the Lord, shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from full of evil. And they are found this chaos and, and no, you over quiet from the fear of evil. You still, you're at rest. Quiet 
from the fear of evil. Okay? And doing these things, verse 16, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, all this I just read you, continue in them, continue, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself, you're going to save yourself, and them that hear thee. Okay, I'll cut that out of uh, 1 Timothy uh, 4, 12 through 16. I'm going to read it in the plain version. And don't let anyone put you down because you're young. Teach, okay, I left all of it and I'm going to read all of it anyway. By the word, by, 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 by word, by demeanor, by love, by faith. Oh yeah, don't let anyone put you down because you're young. Teach believers with your life. Teach other people with your life. By word, by the way you walk and talk, by demeanor, by your countenance and the way you treat people, by love, by faith, by the integrity that you walk with, stay at your post, stay at your post, stay at your post, all call for the wife, all call for the mother, reading, praying, intercession, studying the Bible. It says stay at your post, reading scripture, giving counsel, that means help people, pray, show what you do know in the Lord, and I mean what you know, okay, not out of your own heart, not out of your own heart. What you've grown in wisdom in. Okay? And the special gift of ministry you were given when the leaders of the church laid hands on you. You know, if some of y'all got your gifts, you have been called out to and prophesied over in various ways, okay? Um, that you don't forget your gift. Whatever your spiritual gift is and what the Lord has called you to do, he says stay on your post. Okay? And those of you who don't know yet, what is your post? Fear God. Trust him. Do good. Those of you who don't know exactly what your call is yet, read scripture and stay on your post in prayer. Read scripture and pray and live holy. Okay? He's going to instruct you into your path. Instruct you in into the call he's placed upon your life. He will do it. Okay? Cultivate these things. Immerse yourself in them. The people will all see you're, mature up, you're mature and upright before their eyes. They will mature... They, <laughs> The people will all see you mature right before their eyes. Keep a firm grasp on both your character and your teaching. That means these words you're getting, keep a grasp on. Don't let, don't let them try to come at you with all this mess they come in. They got that uh, allowed the spirit of confusion to come in for many. Now they don't know what word to believe. They don't know what the truth is. When the Bible right there before their eyes in plain language, they don't know what name to call in. When that's the name that saved them when they was half crazy. Now all of a sudden they don't think it's the name. Okay. Don't be diverted. What do you think going on now with all this mess? Don't be diverted. Just keep at it. Both you and those who hear you will experience salvation. Salvation is more than just eternal life. It is the protection in these plagues. Being kept with food and clothes and raiment. Being kept your mind from being going crazy. Being your family not dying early. That is, the, that is salvation. When he stopped the car wreck that could have happened up the road. That's salvation. When he keep you from falling back in your own way, in old habit, that's salvation. When you would say something back to somebody, when they said something crazy, and he stopped their mouth, that's salvation. He just saved you from reaping the harvest that may be perverse. That's salvation. To cause you to align right now in your house in order to get the blessing, that's salvation. To cause you to be chased and holy in your life and put down the porn and not look at vile stuff, that's salvation. Okay? He, he's multifaceted. Don't make a momentum out of one point or one thing he does. Make an altar by worshiping him with your heart so you can see the many facets, the multifaceted, many-fold side of the Lord. That's why he says, I am that. He needs to be more than that one thing to you. When you got some mess over here, he needs to be that too. Another need comes up, he needs to be that too. So don't memorialize one deliverance. Okay? Because then he ceases to be more than that to you. When he is that he is. <laughs> okay? If you obey, it will be well with you. Jeremiah 7 and 23. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, obey my voice. And that is his audible voice, and the voice that's coming through ministers who have his spirit. And I will be your God, and ye shall be my people, and ye and walk ye in all the ways I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. 
Listen is how it is well with you. Obey his voice, which is his written, his rainbow, right now word, and the written word. For we live not only by the written word, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He is still talking. Okay? If we live with, stick with, and die with, we know that's 2 Timothy 2, verse 11 through 13. Read that on your own time. Stay in faith, beloved. Stay in faith. This message is premature death from want of wisdom. This is prophetic. You're going to see it. Slave by your turning away. Therefore, receive the foundation of wisdom. For the Lord. Let's go back down. Okay. The Lord, when he comes, when he finds faith in the earth. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. You will read all of Luke. Because this is Luke 18 and 8. All those who do and work unrighteousness. He said, but nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth. Let him find faith. On the earth when he comes. And without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. He was justified in the spirit. He was seen of angels. These are the angels of the churches. Preached unto the Gentiles. Believed on in the world. And received up into glory. And this is without controversy. And the angels that saw him here were earth angels and regular angels, okay? Because the, the angels of the churches are men. They are people who are pastors and prophets and teachers, okay? Again, this is a prophetic word and warning because this is what you're going to see. Premature death from want of wisdom. You are slayed by your turning away. Therefore, receive the foundation of wisdom. What is that foundation of wisdom? For the Lord. Beloved, share this message and many others I have to come. Grace be with you, and I love you all. So into the good ground of preach be a voice, not an echo, yet only as you have purposed in your heart. For God loves a cheerful giver. The truth, the truth of the word of God. Word of God. 1 Corinthians 9.11 reads, If we have sown into your spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Give only with purpose and cheer, for we desire fruit that will abound towards your account. We thank you for all of your support, seed of your time, seed of your prayers, and the purpose seed of your gifts. To give, visit our YouTube channel and click on the PayPal logo or go directly to PayPal using the following links or email preachbvne at yahoo.com. To listen to more messages and for the latest updates and offers, visit www.preachbvne.webs.com. Also view messages on the YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash preach be a voice, not an echo ministry. Also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Do the work of an evangelist. Watch it, then share it. Beloved, we wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Grace be with you. Thank you for joining us today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.